In this video, learn what cryptocurrency staking is and why it's important, especially for investors. We're gonna go through what proof of stake actually is, how it works under the hood and the mechanisms behind it, which is obviously important to know, and then what investors should do. If you own a proof of stake cryptocurrency, staking it is obviously going to get you some staking rewards. And as an investor, you might wanna go ahead and do that. So we'll explain exactly what it is in this video, timestamps in the description below, alongside some other helpful videos that I might reference here. So check the description for all of that info. So firstly, why would anyone stake their cryptocurrency and what does that actually mean? Well, really simply, what happens is you can actually earn a yield from staking. So pretty simple. If you're an investor, you want to make returns, right? Well, how about making, you know, 2% to 10% as a passive income, as a yield on your cryptos? You can do that through all of these cryptos except this one right here. This one's a little bit different. This is Bitcoin and it works on proof of work mining, which means you can earn a yield from it, but you have to go and mine it. You have to buy a computer, it's known as, as an ASIC, and it has to mine the Bitcoin and you have to use energy. But you can do that if you wanna become a miner. These ones though are different. These are proof of stake cryptocurrencies, meaning that the yield you can get right here actually comes from investing your coins into the network, which means you don't have to be a miner. All you have to do is invest and you get those rewards. So that's the difference between a proof of stake crypto and a proof of work crypto like Bitcoin. Staking rewards essentially keep proof of stake cryptocurrencies secure. They keep it running, just like mining rewards in Bitcoin. So here's kind of the differences between proof of stake and proof of work, but they really have the same goal of keeping the network secure. With a Bitcoin transaction, you will obviously send your BTC and that goes to a node which checks the transaction. They then send that transaction bundled with many others over to the mining network. So you have miners right here who use energy um, to hash out the, you know, some random number. And then whoever wins that kind of competition essentially gets rewarded with some Bitcoin. And then what happens is that, you know, that, that, goes over, goes over again, obviously with the, you know, the next round of transactions, but that Bitcoin and all of those transactions get sent through. So miners use energy to keep the network secure and they get rewarded in BTC. How a proof of stake cryptocurrency works is a little different. You don't have miners. The way you keep the network secure is by using the coins of investors. So for something like Cardano, you take your Cardano, this will be a transaction, you send that transaction to a node, but the node, actually called a stake pool on Cardano, essentially is a collection of many investors' coins. And the investors put their coins up to the node. The node is incentivized to run the network to make sure that transactions are going through, and they collect everyone's coins, and the Cardano network will pay the, the investors, you know, let's call it 4% in ADA tokens. Now the node right here, he's incentivized to run the network because he can take a fee from this. So let's say he takes 5% of the amount of money that he has in terms of ADA coins that people give him. So the only reason, you know, why coins are given out as staking rewards is because no one's gonna do that for free. A node, someone isn't gonna run a node in their house, in their basement, on a computer for free. They need an incentive to do that. You incentivize people to run the network and keep it secure. With BTC mining, that's uh, Bitcoin for miners. With proof of stake, you reward node operators by letting them collect people's investments and giving the coins out to investors. So that 4% goes to investors, but the node operator or the stake pool also charges a fee. So they get a reward for running the network and keeping it secure. Staking is just a method of rewarding market participants to run the network and keep it secure over time. So staking really is just a reward mechanism where investors can give their coins over to the people that run the network and the people that run the network, as long as they are good and you know actually run the network properly, they get a bit of that reward. Now the downside for them, and the punishment for them, is that if an investor stakes their coin with the node and they do a bad job, then that stake actually gets slashed. That's like a punishment 
and the coins get taken away if they you know are bad actors and they try and input a wrong transaction or somehow try to do something that would damage the network they get their punishment which is the coins taken away if they run the network properly they get a bonus the people get their staking rewards and everyone's happy and the network runs in a proper safe way that sounds really great but where exactly are these rewards coming from and how are they being paid you can't just create coins out of nothing and pay people because obviously those coins have to have value and the only way they have value is if there's some scarcity involved the way that the us dollar does it is just keeps printing money and the money over time and so the value of each dollar goes down because more and more are in circulation that's obviously not good right because that just is a death spiral down and the value of that currency just becomes you know close to zero in real terms against other assets so that's something that you just can't do to have a, a proper functioning system in crypto so for example if ada pays people three percent more cardano for keeping the network secure that's great but it's inflating the supply by three percent right so everyone that's investing gets 3%, right? So if everyone gets 3% more all the time, you don't actually have more value. You just have more coins, but the project is worth the same. This can be um, kind of compared to something like a piggy bank with shares, right? So let's say there are two people, two investors, and they have one share of a piggy bank each, right? So they have 50-50. The piggy bank has $1,000 in it, so 50-50, they obviously get $500 dollars uh, each now if you give the same people more shares so you can see they have two shares each of the piggy bank now but the piggy bank still has a thousand dollars in it so they still only have five hundred dollars each in value so you can see that just printing coins out of nowhere increases the supply but it doesn't increase the value of what people have so this is known as inflation of course very simply the supply you know, the, the staking rewards have to come from basically somewhere else, right? You can't just keep printing tokens over and over again. So a lot of the uh, staking yields have to come from a, a good, uh, reliable and profit-making ecosystem, essentially from fees. Now, in the early days, which we are in right now, a lot of the uh, token rewards and staking rewards comes from inflation. That is the printing of new coins. Inflation, you can see right here, Cardano, I'm using them as an example, has high inflation at the beginning, but over time, that inflation goes down, goes down to essentially almost nothing. In fact, what we can see here is that Cardano has a cap on its supply, and so do most other coins as well. You can look at the total supply on something like CoinGecko. The total supply for Cardano is 45 billion coins, and there are currently 33.8 billion in circulation. At some point in the future, there will be no new coins minted, and so staking yields will not come from new coin issuance. In fact, many coins have a long-term plan to do this. They pay staking rewards through fees and not through token issuance. So for example, the way that uh, Ethereum does it is essentially burns tokens to make sure that the total max supply doesn't increase. In terms of ADA, like I said, 45 billion coins. In terms of BNB, 168 million is the max supply. Matic has 10 billion coins and Aave has 16 million coins. So staking rewards can be paid by coin issuance. For example, if Matic only has 5 billion in circulation, they have another 5 billion that they can print to reward users early on to get people into the system. Over time, when this amount is in circulation and they physically cannot print anymore, then all of the staking rewards will come from fees paid on the blockchain. Interestingly, Aave is not a blockchain, but it's actually an application. You can think of staking rewards here as the profits that this business makes. Aave is a lending protocol. They charge fees for people that borrow. And so those fees can actually go back to Aave holders in the form of staking rewards. This is essentially like paying a dividend to shareholders. One of the downsides of staking as an investor is that when you give your coins to a validator or a node, there's usually a lockup period. So this isn't great. 
For example, Matic, I think, is nine days, but you can look, there's a seven to 21 day lockup for most coins, which isn't great, which means that you give your coins over and you, you know, hopefully get the rewards. If the validator isn't good, you'll get your coins slashed, which obviously isn't great. And you can't take them out for a certain period of time. This is, you know, a downside of staking. Investors do not want to lock up their coins, of course. And so there are service providers that essentially let us invest and get staking rewards, but we don't have to lock up the coins. These are known as liquid staking derivatives. Here's how they work. You have an investor that wants to get staking yields on his coin, in this instance, Polygonmatic. He will give his coin over to a service provider like Lido. Now Lido go ahead and stake his Matic with validators and you can actually see them right here these are the validators on polygon so many people running nodes in the network you can see that they take a 10 percent fee and the checkpoint signed is 100 that obviously means they're a reliable validator and they'll be paying those staking rewards but obviously we don't want that nine day lockup so what lido do is create a different token called a liquid staking derivative this one is called staked matic this token, they pass the, let's say, 9% yield back. They get that from the validator and then they pay that to this token. So your token is not locked up with the validator, but the staking yields that Lido gets from all of these different investors goes back to the liquid staking derivative that they have given you. Now, the benefit here is that you don't have to lock up your coins with the node over here but you do get the staking rewards. And you may think, well, these guys are locking up their coins. How come my coins aren't locked up? Well, essentially, if there's a billion dollars worth of coins invested, there may only be a million dollars of redemptions per day. And so Lido may keep a float of coins that is getting re redeemed every single day so they can essentially you know, pay the people that want to redeem. But really, this coin can always be redeemed for the staked coin, meaning that, mar that market participants will not allow this coin right here to deviate from the value of the staked coin because it's always redeemable one for one for that staked coin. And so even though a trader or a market maker or a market participant may have to wait nine days, if he can buy at a little bit of a discount, let's say 1% or something, he'll make 1% over nine days because he can just buy your liquid staking derivative for cheaper and then nine days later, get it on a one for one basis. And so that keeps this liquid staking derivative the same price as the staked coin, but it's liquid and it's earning the yield. In fact, you don't even have to stake your coins anymore. You can just buy these LSDs on the market. For example, if I go to select a coin right here and then I look at staked Matic, you can see that staked Matic, uh, if, if I have one Matic, staked Matic is, is trading basically on a one for one basis. It's actually trading at 98 cents on the dollar, meaning that there's a 2% difference between staked Matic and Matic. So if I want to go ahead and buy some staked Matic, I have to spend my one Matic, but I'm getting those staking rewards. Market arbitrages will come in here and make sure that these two coins trade around about at par because this staked Matic can always be redeemed for Matic one for one. So they're making basically an arbitrage. We get a better deal. We get these staking derivatives that earn income and we don't have to stake our coins specifically with validators and have them locked up. Most blockchains do or will in the future have LSDs. Some blockchains don't need them. For example, Cardano, the way it's created initially you don't need LSDs. It just does it automatically. But here are some considerations. Firstly, staking provides rewards for blockchain partic participants, both node operators and investors. It keeps the system true and you know capitalist framework of actually keeping it running. Uh, staking rewards are paid via emissions initially, meaning more tokens are created to incentivize everyone to actually run this network. Over time, though, you don't want that. Staking yields in the future should come from transaction fees and smart contract fees. Essentially, it's a business that is charging fees and those fees should be paid back to you. The staking rewards that you get will only be an actual yield when the 
token emissions are lower than the staking yield. If you're getting 5% as a staking yield, but the system is creating 25% new coins every year, you're actually losing 20% because you're getting diluted by 20% every year, not earning 5%, right? Uh, think of staking as getting paid dividends. In the future, essentially all staking yields should come from just people paying fees to that blockchain, to that business, and everyone is getting rewarded for keeping it running and true. Um, you can stake on the blockchain directly. Uh, every blockchain has a wallet that you should be able to stake in. You can use service providers like Lido, or you can just use exchanges. Each one has um, different trust assumptions and ease of use. Staking can be pretty complex, but essentially it's just a yield that is paid to investors to make sure that the system is running. The main thing though, is that we do not want staking yields paid long-term via creation of new coins. That is inflation and that's not actual yield. We want a limited supply of coins and the fees paid to pay our staking rewards. If you wanna know more about this, it's a really in-depth topic. I have an entire section on DeFi and staking in my crypto course. You can see the videos here. I'll link it in the description and it goes through what staking is, how I use it, how I invest and how I earn passive income from staking and you know other uh, ways in DeFi as well. So I'll link that in the description. I'm James with MoneyTG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.